am Daz. And on the bench today is a radio that I think featured in some stuff that I got in previous video, but it's a Dynatron Escort radio, which I guess is from the early 70s, late 60s. Very, very dusty, as you can see, could do with a clean. Don't really know much about this radio. I've just printed some diagrams out and uh, went a funny colour when I realised it's got modules in it and I've never tackled a radio with mullard modules in before so that's uh, an interesting thing. I've no idea if it works but it is in a bit of a tatty condition. So it's a free wave band radio with a car input, there's tone, volume and tuning and a telescopic aerial. Around the side there's a headphone jack and a car aerial input so it's aimed at putting in your car if you didn't have an option, uh, a car radio installed I guess. Interesting to notice the VHF goes up to 107 which is good. Um, I do like radios that do do the full bang because we've got a few stations at the top end so uh, that's something. Well there's a shot of just looking inside the radio and it has a Mullard 1165 module. I don't know if that's a Mullard module or not, perhaps someone will tell me, AE02156 VHF module. The telescopic aerial isn't even attached to the looks of it, nope, nor is the top of the case, so this isn't going to take long to get apart is it? Well just looking at the data I have, which I got out the radio and TV service and manual, I think it was the 7071 edition. Just basically shows the amplifier. It looks like someone has changed a capacitor in here. It's a mixture of germanium and one silicon, I believe. Um, there's several wires hanging here. I don't know which one went to the car aerial, but that one that appears to have been disconnected. Um, probably worthwhile powering up. I can see that the grommets that hold the tuner in are completely knackered. Oh yeah, there's the little neon tube which is prevent damage from discharge on a car aerial, static damage I guess. Yeah, this looks uh, great fun. <laughs> Sometimes you pick a radio out and think, oh I'll have a look at this one and then you look at the wire and you think, oh that's scary, very very scary. With components hanging on left, right and centre. Hmm, okay, let's try some juice. Okay, let's give it some power. Got the current limit on. Okay, it's drawing about 50 milliamps, which seems rather high. I'll have to keep an eye on that. That doesn't run away. There is a hiss from the speaker. So the amplifier's going. Ooh, they sound good. I hope that didn't deafen you too much. Just the same hiss. Just an IF hiss and an amplifier hiss, I guess. So not a lot going on there. Afraid to say. I could hit it with a bit of contact cleaner, but I don't think it'll do any good, I guess. The module's got my favourite transistors in it, the AF series, so I guess they may well be short circuited. The current I've got the current limit on, I'm now drawing 80 milliamp and it's starting to limit on the current limit, so I better not push my luck. Well a shot contact clean hasn't done anything, I didn't think it would for a minute. Mind you that still a bit yeah. Yeah, these output transistors are getting decidedly warm, so they're obviously some problem with the biasing. Yeah, they're quite warm. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Turn that off again. So they're obviously firmly running away for whatever reason. Okay, so basically everything's in the modules. So you've got just four transistor here for your audio amplifier and the rest is done by the modules. I've got information on this module but I've got nothing on this one so I'm betting it's full of more tin, tin whiskered transistors. 
Well, here's inside the tuner head and that's come unstuck. On the inductor, so they're going to need sticking back down. So there's an AF178 there and an AF115. So I suppose with these modules, it's getting towards the stage where you don't fix the damn radio again, isn't it? Um, looking at these, so um, yeah, interesting. Right, first of all, I want to know what's drawing all this heavy current. It could be the IF stage, I guess. I'll have to have a look how it's supplied in the circuit diagram. Just spotted this resistor here. Um, actually has snapped in half that's the output of the discriminator so might be why we're not getting much from that but this module's got three transistors in the converters used as the first IF for F FM the looks of it so if we've not got FM or AM then it's probably likely that uh, the IF is not working but I think we guessed that anyway didn't we well after replacing the broken discriminator resistor, I can actually hear something on VHF. Exceedingly weak, so... Yes. Well, as you can see, I'm beginning to disassemble it. And, uh... Well, yeah. Um, I've still not really got access to the modules. The soldering on the module looks fresh. Just make me wonder if someone's already been in there. So, um, yeah, this... I could be on hiding to nothing here, but I'm pretty certain the fault lies within the first IF. So I'll just keep proceeding. Finally, after removing about a billion wires, I think I can get access. I just hope my photographs are good enough to put this back together. <laughs> right. One module. Oop, went a bit too far there. Okay, there's the module. And there is the module. With its original transistors, the looks of it. Let's look the other side. There we go. I suspect this hasn't seen the light of day for many a centre, many a decade. But yeah, it's full of uh, tin whiskered AF116s, I guess. Still got the original capacitors in. Just looking at these cores, they look plastic. Mm. There's the diode. Well, at least three of the pins continuity to the case on the first transistor, so. If it's how I think it is, this is the first IF or converter, that'll explain why we had no medium wave and very weak VHF. So that one needs replacing, but they all need replacing, don't they? Let's be honest. Um, they're all going to develop problems, I guess. Right, let's see what happens with this transistor. <laughs> PMP germanium transistor. So after I got a short, I'm not now. Mind you, the case is disconnected, isn't it? So the transistor's all right, but it's shorted to the case. Gain 156. Okay, fair enough. It's strange how I'd had three connections, but when you unsolder these things, I guess it can change what was happening with the transistor. I bet if I ohmmeter it now. Um, Let's try this one. Oh, that's interesting. Free terminal bicolor LED. Well, I've just been uh, putting some new transistors in. I've gone for the Russian ones. Um, let's get right in. I had some miniature 10 microfarads, so I've replaced them as well. Um, so hopefully. Uh, that should work. I'm wondering about testing it outside the uh, unit, so or doing some basic tests anyway. Um, I don't want to have to put it all back in again and then find there's a there's an issue with it. But uh, let's have a look at one of the capacitors. Not that bad. 
I've seen worse, a lot worse. So, but while you're in here, you might as well, mightn't you? Um, spin that one out. I do like the little blue sleeves. Ooh. Okay, it was worth changing them. <laughs> well, what I've done is I've powered the module up on 7.5 volts and I've linked pin 3, I think it is, the FM coil round to negative so all the IF is powered up. So, got a connection to 10.7, let's just see. Oh, yes. That's neg 57, neg 67. So, yeah, it seems sensitive, doesn't it? So the FM discriminator and eye strip appears to be now functional, so that's good. OK, what I've done now is connected 3 to 6, which I think is right. So that connects the first IF to the 470 kilohertz AM coil. Switched over to the AM detector and left the IF where it is. So a bit of luck. Let's just see what happens. Neg 87, Neg 77. Oh my goodness. There's a big difference between those two, isn't there? Um, wow. I meant to say there is a diagram for this module on the UK Vintage Radio Group. So somebody's drawn it out in there. So I'm very grateful for them doing that. So that's helped me a lot with this. Um, now I'm fairly certain that the two demodulators are working. Um, and the IF strip seems quite sensitive, so I'm, I've got a bit more confident about putting it back together and shoving it back in the radio because with all those wires I've got to reconnect. It's going to be um, a bit time consuming if I have to take it apart again. It doesn't work. Oh, that sounds promising. I haven't got the controls fixed back yet. So what wave band am I on? I've no idea. Probably long wave. <laughs> well, that's looking good. I think this is FM. Good. The volume is very low, but I suspect that... Uh, get that off music. The volume's very low, but I suspect that... Uh, the, obviously the amp needs recapping, there's probably issues there with the biasing and all sorts, but at least the current's dropped back down to about 25 milliamp, which is a bit more sensible. Just need to bolt this uh, wave change switch back in now, if you remember how it goes. Well, um, it seems quite sensitive, so I'm quite happy at the moment. I haven't done anything about the transistors in the tuner. Um, it is firmly running away still, so I need to find out why that is. I'm going to change capacitors first, the rest of the electrolytics, before I uh, start to investigate why we're firmly running away. Um, I did manage to get up to 100 milliamps, so that's uh, not so good. It's got a 5 ohm speaker, which is a bit unusual. So it's about to produce quite a bit of output. I'm surprised that the output transistors are not heat synced. Um, but it's complementary output stage 187188, so. Um, a bit like the Grundig I worked on. I've got to do something about these um, grommets on this capacitor. They are completely rotten. Um, they really are crusty. Ooh, yeah, just ooh, just all broken up, look. Um, so I'll get on with the capacitors. I need to... Well, this is a bit bizarre. This is the bypass capacitor for the um, 100 ohm resistor here for the driver transistor. It's marked positive here. But this is the positive rail here. So obviously this is more negative than this because it's an emitter resistor. So what's going on there? That's a bit bizarre. Um, can't believe the silk stream's wrong, can I? This is the audio amplifier for the Escort. I've been working on a Grundig um, concert boy and it's very much a similar circuit. But you'd expect that because it uses the same output transistors as a um, a pair of complementary output transistors and uh, basically you've got two emitter followers um, basically you've got the emitters tied together there um, as for the biasing there's a, f a 470 ohm 
far the speaker again down to ground. And then you've got an AC128 here that can pull the um, pair up towards positive. And then you've got a, the only silicon transistor, which is the MPM here, which is connected to the center point. Um, and that is biased by a set of resistors here to try and set the uh, DC operating point, which wants to be about half the supply rail. You've got a 2K2 here coming back into the emitter, and the idea of that is, is if this goes too, po too positive, it will tend to cut this off, thus cutting this transistor off and dropping it back down again. If it goes too low, this transistor is going to turn on harder, turn this transistor on and pull it back up into the middle, so it sort of stays in the middle. You'll notice there's a massive great capacitor here of our 27 ohm, and that is to bypass the audio because you don't want too much audio feedback, so that's what it's there for, and a little resistor so you get a little bit of feedback. The tone control is quite interesting. I didn't really look at it in close detail at the time, but it actually does give bass boost and treble cut using a center tap in the volume control, so that's a very nice tone control, um, much more advanced than you normally find. So yeah, just a, an interesting output circuit and notice there's no diode to regulate the bias so as supply voltage falls so does the bias. It's a shame they didn't include a diode in there but uh, an interesting circuit. I think these transistors are quite popular. They are quite good. They, they do seem to give quite a nice sound. Uh, don't sound too germanium as I, I often say but uh, anyway that's the amplifier. Well, it's now completely recapped. So all the electrolytes have been replaced. Some of them have doubled in value, but only a couple of them. What I've found is that the preset for the BIOS has gone open circuit. Um, BIOS is set by going in the collector of transistor 2, and it drifts an awful lot. I know germanium transistors drift, but I'm beginning to suspect something here. It's supposed to be about 3 milliamp, so, but I suspect what will happen is it'll drift. If it does, I'm going to have to consider changing the transistors. Come on. Yes, it's a 10 turn pot, which is ridiculous, I know, but it's the only 200 ohm resistor I had. So I'm just going to. If this uh, device will stay in, I'm going to go down to 3 milliamps, which is what it demands. But I just wonder if it uh, will drift when cold. Right, there you go. Now it's going down because the transistors are cooling. This will take some while. Must admit, I've got several packets of uh, grommets now, but it's still hard to find something that's exact fit. I managed to slide this up enough so I could get the mounting bolts out and then replace them. God, they'd crumbled. So yeah, that feels a lot better now. It's not rattling around in the wind. Well, this is a difficult one. What's happened is, is the FM tuner started going intermittent, and of course, we know what's the cause of it. A bit of a tap and back it come again. Now, they've got um, some points here where it's soldered, and they've also soldered the trimming capacitors there as well. It's not making it easy for me to figure out how to quite go at that. Um, so I'm not sure whether to try and cut the wires off this AF115 or whether to try and get the whole module out and do it properly. Um, I just don't know. What a bodge! <laughs> well, it works, so that's the main thing. But I did, just didn't really fancy trying to get these out at all, really. So anyway, right, that's that problem solved. Put an AF125 in. Well, I've been having a few problems with the medium wave drifting off tune, and I couldn't quite figure out what was going on, but uh, I have now. I think you can see what's happening there when I wiggle the cable to it. The, uh, the plates are sort of moving by themselves, so I don't know if something's broken on the ceramic or something, so... That is the uh, gloss later as well, so that's not so good. So I'm just trying to figure out how to fix that. The only thing I think is, is perhaps um, epoxy the wire coming out. I really do not want to try and take this tuner head off. 
I've already had one attempt at it, so... But that's the problem anyway. Right. So that's 370. Let's see what this one's doing. That's a bit different. Just have to fiddle with that until I get it right. Okay, so I've uh, put some uh, epoxy resin around the uh, terminal where it goes into the um, ceramic and that's now holding the wire together so I'm hoping now that they both read fairly similar. Let's see if I can even get the clips to hold on. What's this one saying? 368 365 so hmm. see what it's like at another position 181 175 well they're fairly similar we'll just have to hope that uh, where I've glued it it's not causing a short either it looks good I might notice I've used some bits of paper, but I've soldered the wires back on and have a tune. Rooney, when I say we, I, it a bit of a Rooney. Well, it's getting Caroline very well, so obviously it's now tracking properly like it should, so that's a relief. Um. <coughs> Unfortunately, I thought I'd fix this, but the veins are still moving. Oh, no. Ah! Right, okay, back to drawing board. Okay, about take 20. What I've done is very naughty. I've put some epoxy down here onto uh, the ceramic bit and onto where it connects to the vein. I've also managed to get some in the vein, but the capacitance is fine and it's nice and sturdy now. It isn't going anywhere, so hopefully I've got round that. The best thing would have been to have the tuner head off, um, to be honest, but... I was just struggling with that so much I really didn't want to risk damaging the capacitors and things but you know anyway hopefully it'll be fine now <laughs> fingers crossed hmm that's a bit fluffy isn't it <laughs> I've already had a little play with this module and really not got much improvement apart from on the discriminator the medium wave there's a couple of um, inductors here now these appear to be for the car aerial and there's a circuit to show you how to make an artificial car aerial and I'm probably not going to really worry about this because I don't think I'm going to be using it in a car. That's the main oscillator trimmer and presumably these are all the trimmers for each end of the band um, and for the ferret rod so the ferret rod hasn't slipped so it's probably peaked where it should be um, so I'm just going to follow whatever it tells me to do which will probably be in adjusted the inductor at the bottom end of the band along with the ferret rod but as I said I don't think it's going to need much trimming and then the high end of the band which will no doubt be these trimmers just trying to work out the uh, alignment and uh, it looks like that the uh, ferret rod is aligned at a slightly different position interesting the local oscillator is aligned at both ends with the uh, cap unmeshed or mesh so that's interesting um, so I made a note of that. I'm just looking at the VHF one and I'm thinking, have I forgot to copy a page or something? Because it refers to 88 and 108 with an inductor and a capacitor, which makes sense to me to adjust the local oscillator. But all I've got here is C7 90 megs. That doesn't even make sense to me. This must be the RF section. And then you've got L3 and 4, which I assume is the 10.7. No mention of that at all, so uh, I don't know. Um, I, I reckon they're 10.7 anyway, it's my guess because um, they've got a lot more wire on but uh, okay I'll get on with this, I'm going to use a, a loop aerial as usual
think this is a bit out somewhere along the line. Well, it seems to me that the ferret rod wants to go that far across, so if that's where it wants to go, that's where it wants to go. So, uh, definitely the maximum sensitivity there. I have twigged the high end, because sometimes that inflates the bottom, but uh, no, it seems to like being slightly off the end of the ferret rod, so if that's where it wants to go, that's where it wants to go. Sometimes I find I have to turn my lights off to do long wave, because the power supply causes a little bit of noise. <sighs> so, so I've put the video lamp on, but uh, yeah, I've just got just got to trim this large one, uh, and then just adjust the ferret rod again. I guess it's loose. Didn't pull the plug out quite well enough, did I? <laughs> you can hear the interference. Lovely. <laughs> Just having a go at the local oscillator on 88. I think with this set it's a case of guessing where 108 is but hopefully this will pull the other end of the local oscillator in. There we go. Just see if it tracks right now. Well, I had a little twig up of the capacitor at the high end. I picked about 106 and about 90 for the inductor on the RF side and it didn't seem that far out. The sensitivity is about what I'd expect for a germanium set. Um, so it's not, not as good as a silicon set but it's still pretty good. It picks up all the local stations all right. Um, when I had the module out I did have a go at the discriminator and got that more or less bang on. So uh, the set sounds very superb. Um, I'll have to demonstrate that with some YouTube music, so it does sound very good. Um, I'm quite impressed. The only thing that's worrying me now is going back to the biasing. Somebody has changed these transistors, I'm pretty certain. I'm also thinking there must have been a heat sink or something on here because the problem is I can set the bias and get the bias to about 3 or 4 milliamp, but once the set's been switched on for a while it drifts up to near a 10 and if you play it loud, even higher, so there is thermal runaway going on. I've just put the two transistors close to each other at the moment just to take that into account, but uh, I, I haven't been able to find a photograph of this damn thing on the internet showing the uh, transistors. I'm going to have to look a bit harder just so I can get a clue, you know, to uh, how this should have been. I think this I think this radio has been tampered with so much. I think there's a lot of things been done to it. I'm sure that tuning dial is not original either with a block of wood. I'm sure that isn't right. But um yeah, it does actually produce a nice sound. Um as long as you don't overdo the bass, it makes it rattle a bit. Um so very, very good so far. In the finish I have found another transistor and bolted it onto a small metal heatsink. And I found the bias is a little bit more stable now because it's not regulated in any way. It doesn't half fall off as the battery voltage drops. Um, down at seven and a half, it was uh, less than a milliamp, so I've turned it up slightly. So it's more like about five now, but uh, hopefully that'll be okay and we won't get too much crossover distortion. Green. Well, that's the uh, Dynatron Escort or TP43 from around 1970. I'm not sure exactly the date. Um, that was an interesting one. 
I think the problems with me not being able to get the tuner head off uh, without risk of breaking it, well so I thought possibly the risk of breaking was uh, a bit of a problem especially when we found that there was problems with the vanes on the medium wave local oscillator capacitor so that was a bit of a problem. That's the first time that I've taken a radio apart and uh, uh, actually encountered a module. Um, I've never encountered a module before so that was my first time. So there we go. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you found it interesting and I'll see you soon. Like, subscribe and all that. <laughs> Bye.